already been talking about. Mike Shoesmith is on with me. So, Mike, tell us about this Harvard study, this blockbuster study that has basically trashed evolution again. Now, they don't they don't know yeah. they've done it. They don't say that. But you and I know, because we've been debating this for years at the PNN News and Ministry Network, taking heat from evolutionists, but it has now blown up in their face with a Harvard report. Tell our audience about it. Yeah, but the audience, you ever wondered how it was that Jesus was able, when Peter cut off the ear of that man, that one of the guards that came to get Jesus, uh, Jesus said, uh, please stop doing that, and he uh, reached over, touched the man's ear, and the ear grew back. You ever wondered how he did that? Well, him being the author of life, the creator of the DNA uh, language in our bodies, uh, simply had to just turn on a switch. And guess who proved it? Harvard University. They have just uncovered DNA switches in our bodies that control genes for whole body regeneration. Carl, this is absolutely amazing. Humans may one day have the ability to regrow limbs after scientists at Harvard University uncovered the DNA switch that controls genes for whole body regeneration. This is absolutely amazing. Yes. You know, you've you've been in debates with evolutionists before who say, look at all the junk DNA in our bodies. We don't need uh, all this DNA. It's just residual garbage from the past, right, from evolutionary leaps and jumps and so on. According to Harvard now, that's all been debunked. Uh, Some animals can achieve extraordinary feats of repair, such as salamanders, which grow back legs, or geckos, which can shed their tails to escape predators, and then form new ones again, Carl, in just a few months. Planarian worms, jellyfish, and sea anemones go even further, actually regenerating their entire bodies after being cut in half. Now scientists have discovered that in the worms, a section of non-coding or, quote, junk DNA, unquote, controls the activation of a master control gene, Carl, called early growth response, or EGR, which acts like a power switch turning regeneration on or off, Carl. We were able... Quote, we were able to decrease the activity of this gene, and we found that if you don't have EGR, nothing happens, said uh, the assistant professor. You've got to be careful with this word here. Organismic and evolutionary biology at Harvard University. The animals just can't regenerate if they turn that switch off, Carl. All those downstream genes just simply will not turn on, so the other switches don't work. The whole house goes dark, basically. The studies were done in three banded panther worms. Scientists found that during regeneration, the tightly packed DNA in their cells starts to unfold, allowing new areas to activate. But crucially, Carl, this is important, humans also carry EGR and produce it when cells are stressed and in need of repair. Yet it does not seem to trigger large-scale regeneration. Now, Now scientists, Carl, think that it that if master gene is, is wired differently in humans to animals and now trying to find a way to tweak its circuitry to reap its regenerative benefits. Postdoctoral student Andrew Gerke of Harvard believes the answer lies in the area of non-coding DNA controlling the gene or basically junk DNA. You know, the evolutionists claim that if, if, a, if a DNA doesn't code for anything, it's garbage junk leftover DNA from previous manifestations, right? right. Non-coding or junk DNA was once believed to do nothing, Harvard even admits this, that, oops, the evolutionists were wrong. This is from the from the evolutionary biology department at Harvard, by the way, yeah. admitting they were wrong, Carl. It was just released Long yesterday. Junk DNA. <laughs> right. They're now admitting in this one sentence, non-coding or junk DNA was once believed to do nothing, but in recent years, scientists have realized it's, it's having a major impact. Yes. So it's basically, they're realizing, sorry, we were wrong. Only 2% of the genome makes things pro- like proteins out of Gerke. We want to know what is the other 98% yeah. of the genome doing during yeah. the whole body regeneration. Yeah. I think we've only just, they've only just scratched the surface here, Carl, of the biggest oops in evolutionary biology junk science that has ever yep. been, really. Yep. We've looked at some of these switches, but there's a whole other aspect of how the genome is interacting on a larger scale. There's the big admission. Yes. There's and- a whole other aspect of how this genome, created by Jesus, my words added there, is interacting on a larger scale. And all of that, Carl, is important for turning genes on and off. There's no such thing as junk. You know the old saying, God don't make junk? Mm, that's right. Well, and Harvard <laughs> University just proved that God don't make, make junk. Doesn't make junk. And so what if Jesus, 
of Nazareth. What if he was God with us, God in the flesh? Which means, what if the scriptures in in, in Colossians and Hebrews chapter 1 and Colossians chapter 1 and John chapter 1 that speak of the fact that it was Jesus, in the person of Jesus, God created everything that is created. What if it was Jesus that called the first genetic code by his mouth? in the Garden of Eden, in creating Adam and Eve and humanity and the animals and everything living, he calls it, he speaks it by name. What if he shows up in the flesh? He's in the Garden of Gethsemane on that fateful night. And what if a soldier's ear gets cut off? And what if the one who created and can speak the switches off and on with his own mouth, what if he reaches up and says, boom, boom? Your ear is restored. How did you do that? That was magic. Exactly. No, it's the creator <laughs> of everything who's disguised in the flesh, right. and he's just proven who he is. This article was written by Sarah Napton from The Telegraph. Thank you, Mike Shoesmith. That's an amazing piece of information.